This video will cover how to replace a water pump and thermostat on a 2002 5.3 liter Vortex engine. We have the new water pump and gaskets and a thermostat with the o-ring. We must have our some oil pans for all the liquids we will be draining and of course the new replacement fluid which is radiator coolant. We have a nice tent to give us shade and in case of rain. And the front is up on ramps, emergency brake on, and back wheels chucked, drop lights, two-step ladders that come in very handy because the truck is way up high right now. To get access to the front of the engine, we need to take out the intake and the upper shroud. But before we begin that, we start draining the radiator fluid. There's a hose clipped to the top of the radiator on the driver's side that needs to be unclipped and make it hang down to the bottom of the vehicle and have a pan ready when you open the peacock valve. And while that's draining, we start to work on top. And by the way, make sure that the top is off on the coolant reservoir. It makes the radiator drain faster. We now start taking off the intake. Using an 8mm socket on a ratchet, unbolt both sides of the intake. Then pull back and lift on the engine side. You can then pull it away from the air filter box and put it aside. We take the plastic engine cover off. To take off the top shroud, start with the two bolts on top. And with a trim tool, you can pry off the four plastic rivets, two on each side. Just lift the center pin and the rivet will come right out. Unclip any hoses and hold them out of the way as you pull the shroud out. We're going to use a C-clamp with a rubber boot that makes contact with the top of the belt and clamps to the water pump pulley preventing it from turning while loosening the fan. We use an adjustable wrench to loosen the fan bolt and then spin the fan off by hand the rest of the way. Also, using a pipe with the adjustable wrench makes it a lot easier. With the clutch fan removed, we took off the C-clamp. Now we can remove the drive belt. Placing a 15mm socket on the belt tensioner, rotate clockwise to loosen the serpentine belt and pop it off one of the pulleys. Then release the tensioner and remove the belt. With a ratchet and 15mm socket, we removed the bolts holding the tensioner. Before we take any hoses off, we take down the skid plate under the vehicle and place the pans in place to catch the fluids. We take off the lower radiator hose at the thermostat housing, using pliers to release the clamp and slide it back. Then by twisting and pulling it, the hose should come off and tuck it out of the way. Now we remove the two bolts from the thermostat housing. Fluid will come out. Remove the clamps from the two heater hoses and pull them out of the water pump. Loosen the clamp from the radiator upper hose and pull it off. Next we remove the six 10mm bolts off the water pump pulley. You will see three on each side. If the bolts are not the same exact length, make sure you organize them to go back in the same place you removed them from. Once they're all loose, pull the water pump off and let it drain before putting it to the side. Match it with the new pump by putting them side by side and do the same with the thermostat and it's time to clean all the areas where the new seals will be installed and clean all the parts. A razor blade and brake cleaner is the best and quickest way to get all the crusty deposits off. The better it's clean, 
the less chances of leaks. And with brake cleaner on the rack, wipe down the gasket areas again before installing the water pump. Line up the new gaskets on the water pump and insert the bolts to hold them aligned. Just a quick note, if you were replacing the oil pump or timing chain, we would not be installing the new water pump at this stage, but we would remove the harmonic balancer and the timing chain cover behind the water pump and drop the oil pan as well. You can see this on my previous complete video, in which we include replacing the oil pump as well. Now back to the new water pump installation. Line up the bolts while making sure the gaskets are in place on the bolts and careful not to damage the gaskets while tightening the bolts. Set your torque wrench at 12 foot-pounds and torque each 10 millimeter bolt around the water pump. Next, install the new thermostat by carefully lining up the o-ring. Screw in the two 10mm bolts and tighten. Reinsert the radiator hose into the thermostat and the two heater hoses and reposition all the clamps. Reinstall the tensioner on the water pump and tighten the two 15mm bolts. Then reinstall the serpentine belt following the diagram on your manual or from a picture you took before taking it off. Once it's on all the pulleys, Turn the tensioner clockwise and release once the belt is on the pulley. Screw the fan to the water pump pulley and tighten after clamping the belt to the water pump pulley again. Take off the clamp. and install the upper shroud by reinstalling the two top bolts in four clips at the bottom shroud. Reinsert the top hose to the water pump and tighten the strap. Clip on all the hoses to where they originally were. Reinstall the air intake and tighten both sides. Bolt the plastic cover back on. Before refilling the radiator, make sure the peacock valve is closed and the hose tucked away into the clip on the driver's side of the radiator. Don't be afraid to overfill the with coolant because the whole system has to be refilled besides the radiator. Now we bleed the system by starting the engine, turn on the fan, and turn on the heat on max. Rev the engine to around 1000 RPM for about 30 seconds. And wait for the heat to come out of the vent. Then you can turn off the heater and fan, turn off the engine, and add coolant as needed. Test drive it. Continue to check for any leaks in the next few days, just in case. I hope this video gives you an idea of what's involved doing a job like this. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask on the comments. And check the description for links of all the parts and tools we used. You all have a great day.